Welcome back after the break. Now for the news in detail, we start from Afghanistan, where four security personnel have been killed in a car bomb explosion outside a district administration headquarters in eastern Ghazni province. Police say 20 other security officials were wounded in the attack. Officials say a suicide bomber detonated a car filled with explosives near the gate of the government office in Abband district. They say the death toll from the attack may rise. The Taliban have claimed responsibility. Now, the U.S. Supreme Court has allowed President Donald Trump to spend Pentagon funds to build a wall on its southern border. The court ruled by five votes to four to override a decision by a California federal judge to block the funds. The Trump administration can now spend two and a half billion dollars on wall projects in California, Arizona and New Mexico. In a tweet, Trump described the ruling as a big victory. Meanwhile, the United States and Guatemala have signed a migration deal on Central American asylum seekers. Under the agreement, migrants from Honduras and El Salvador passing through Guatemala will be required to first stop there and seek asylum. This comes days after Trump threatened the Central American country with tariffs. Now Trump says he agreed to drop the threat of economic sanctions against Guatemala after the deal. Meanwhile, the U.S. has imposed sanctions on 10 Venezuelan nationals, including President Nicolas Maduro's stepson. Maduro and his business partners have been levied restrictions on transactions. The Treasury Department has accused the Maduros of embezzling hundreds of millions of dollars from food imports. In recent months, the U.S. has escalated sanctions against Venezuela, which is struggling with a political and economic crisis. The government has denied any wrongdoing, saying the American accusations are part of an economic war to bring down Maduro. In another development, U.S. President Donald Trump says he is not concerned about North Korea's recent missile test. It says Thursday's missile launch do not pose any threat to the United States. Trump highlights his strong personal ties with North Korea's chairman Kim Jong-un. Well, you said it. They're short-range missiles, and my relationship is very good with Chairman Kim, and we'll see what happens, but they are short-range missiles, and many people have those missiles. Nope, not at all. Earlier, Chairman Kim said the missile tests were a warning to South Korea to hold joint military exercises with the United States. Now, moving on, eight people have been killed and 60 others injured after two earthquakes struck the northern Philippines. Buildings were also damaged when two tremors measuring 5.4 and 5.9 magnitude hit Batanes province. The Philippines National Disaster Agency says the first quake killed five people, while three others were died in aftershocks. It says the rescue teams have started operations in the affected area. No tsunami warnings have been issued. The Red Crescent rescue workers have recovered 62 bodies of migrants off the Libyan coast a day after their boat capsized in the Mediterranean. The United Nations International Organization for Migration said 110 people are still missing and feared dead. The Libyan Navy earlier rescued 137 survivors. Most of the passengers were from African and Arab countries. The head of the UN's refugee agency, Filippo Grandi, says it is the worst such tragedy in the Mediterranean this year. Libya is a major conduit for African migrants and refugees seeking a better life in Europe. The death toll from seasonal moons and storms in South Asia has jumped to over 670. Excessive flooding in Bangladesh has killed 114 people so far. Since the moon soon arrived earlier this month, landslides, flooding and lightning have killed 470 people in India. Another 100 have died in Nepal. In Pakistan, over 35 people have lost their lives in flash floods and a building collapse. 
Israeli forces have killed a Palestinian man during weekly protests along the Gaza border. The Palestinian Health Ministry says the 23-year-old was hit in the stomach with a live round and died at a hospital in Gaza. It says 40 others were injured when Israeli troops fired live ammunition and rubber bullets at protesters. The demonstrators were calling for Israel to lift its blockade of the territory. Israeli police also detained seven Palestinians from the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Isavie. Officials say over 300 Palestinians have been killed since the start of weekly protests last year. Now, in Iraq, three people have been killed in two bombings in northern Kirkuk and central Saladin provinces. Ten others sustained life-threatening injuries in the deadly attacks. Police officials say two civilians were killed and seven others wounded by a roadside bomb in Kirkuk. In Saladin, a civilian was killed and three others were injured after a bomb went off in an amusement park in the city of Baiji. No group has yet claimed responsibility. Now, Damascus says it will reject any agreement between Turkey and the United States to establish a security zone in northern Syria. State media says any such deal would constitute an attack on the sovereignty and unity of the country. The eight-year-long civil war in Syria has claimed thousands of lives and destroyed the country's infrastructure. Government forces have intensified attacks on the last rebel bastion in northwestern Syria. The UN says airstrikes on civil infrastructure by government forces and their allies have killed scores of civilians. At least 10 different locations, eight in Idlib and two in rural Aleppo, have experienced civilian casualties as a result of airstrikes in the past 10 days alone, causing a minimum of 103 civilian deaths, including at least 26 children. A UN human rights official criticized the Security Council for failing to prevent civilian casualties. Airstrikes kill and maim significant numbers of civilians several times a week, and the response seems to be a collective shrug with the Security Council paralyzed by the persistent failure of its five permanent members to agree to use their power and influence to stop the fighting and killing once and for all. The UN says more than 400,000 people have been displaced in northwestern Syria over the past three months. Meanwhile, in a phone call, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has informed Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan about his country's support for peace in Afghanistan. Khan also spoke about the ongoing situation in occupied Kashmir. Both leaders vowed to maintain good relations between the two countries. Moving on to Ireland, which says Britain's Prime Minister Boris Johnson's approach to Brexit is very unhelpful. Prime Minister Leo Varadkar said the new British leader is on a collision course with the European Union that would prevent an orderly exit. Irish Prime Minister says the question of unification of Ireland and Northern Ireland will arise in future in case of a no-deal Brexit. The criticism from Ireland came just two days after Johnson took office with a pledge to strike a new divorce deal with the European Union. In another development, German Chancellor Angela Merkel has invited UK's new Prime Minister Boris Johnson to discuss Brexit. This comes after they spoke on the telephone about Johnson's plans to leave the European Union in October with or without a deal. Despite Johnson's claims, he can obtain better terms. Merkel and other EU leaders are adamant the terms of Britain's exit cannot be renegotiated. Meanwhile, US President Donald Trump has said talks about a substantial trade deal with the UK are underway. Following a telephone conversation with Boris Johnson, Trump said the new prime minister will do greatly in office. Trump said a bilateral deal with post-Brexit Britain could lead to a tremendous increase in trade. He said US-UK trade had previously been impeded by Britain's membership of the EU. Johnson and Trump agreed to start talks as soon as possible after the UK leaves the European Union. We're working already on a trade agreement. And I think it'll be a very substantial trade agreement. You know, we can do with the UK 
we can do three to four times. We were actually impeded by their relationship with the European Union. We were very much impeded on trade. More news coming up after a break. Stay tuned. Welcome back now. Moving on with the news stories. U.S. President Donald Trump has asked the world trade organizations to stop designating China and other thriving economies as developing nations. The move comes ahead of renewed trade talks between the U.S. and China in Shanghai next week. Under WTO rules, developing countries qualify for preferential treatment in trade agreements. Highlighting China, Trump said dozens of countries abuse their developing status. He also named Turkey, Mexico, the United Arab Emirates and Qatar. Trump said the WTO must change the provisions that define developing economies. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, the World Health Organization said the United States can boost the battle against Ebola virus by allowing more of its experts to visit the outbreak zone. Ebola virus has killed over 1,700 people in Congo since the world's second worst outbreak was declared almost a year ago. WTO says it has over 600 staff in the field. A WHO official said it can redouble its efforts for containing the disease with the deployment of more people. Poor security in the affected areas has hampered efforts to control the outbreak of Ebola. The World Health Organization has declared electronic cigarettes and heated tobacco products unhelpful in the fight against cancer. A WHO report has urged smokers and governments not to trust claims from cigarette firms about their latest products. The report accuses the tobacco industry of being an aggressive and well-resourced opposition to tobacco control measures. The WHO program manager Vinayak Prasad said misleading branding of tobacco products is aimed at growing their market share. That the industry is claiming it to be a, a way to quit, but the evidence is not showing it. The evidence in the US, for example, is that they were, they were liberal to open the market for electronic cigarettes for almost like seven, eight years. WHO also says e-cigarettes are contrary to claims made by their manufacturers and are just like other tobacco products. Now moving on to Cyprus where a court has extended remand of seven Israeli youths for another six days on suspicious of raping of a 19-year-old British tourist. Police covered faces of all suspects with their t-shirts as they were being escorted into the court. Last week, 12 individuals were arrested after the women said she was raped in a hotel room at the popular tourist resort of Aia Napa. Five of them were released yesterday. The suspects and alleged victim were holidaying in the resort known for its all-night party lifestyle. Eager tourism is booming around the world. A Dutch company is offering innovative cruises along Amsterdam's famous canals. Participants aim to fish as much plastic waste as possible during a two-hour boat tour. More in this report. Yeah, I don't want nets in my face, sorry. Equipped with fishing rods and thick gloves, a group of people peer into the water from one of the many boats lining Amsterdam's famous canals. But it's not fish they are hunting on their cruise along one of the Dutch capital's most famous tourist attractions. It's plastic. Uh, yeah. You find a waste bin and it's already full. People put their uh, stuff uh, just underneath the waste bin, for instance, and one person starts and the other does it also. So before you know, there's a lot of waste on the streets. And then begin, it begins to rain or it begins, uh, the, the wind begins to blow and it rains or blows into the canals. The canal cruises run by the Dutch group Plastic Whale are reeling in big business. In 2018, they drew 12,000 visitors and this year the company expects more. Obviously, you're on the beautiful canals of Amsterdam in a really nice boat, but at the same time, you're active as well, and you add something positive to the canals and to the city because you're making it cleaner. 
Last year, the thousands of amateur fishermen and women on plastic whales' boats collected 46,000 plastic bottles. They fished out a bizarre range of objects including shoes, bleached out soda cans, wine bottles and even nappies. Really enjoyed it, but also it's uh, really eye-opening just how much rubbish there is in, uh, there are, there's in all the canals. So. Plastic in sea, rivers and other waterways is a problem around the globe causing harm to marine ecosystems. Amsterdam is increasingly a victim of its own success with its canals and architecture attracting 18 million visitors last year. Meanwhile, in Romania, an interpreter brings a music festival to life for the hearing impaired community. Using her hands, Amber Galloway Gallego translated the music into sign language. It is the first time a major festival has been made accessible to the country's hearing impaired community. More in this report. The Electric Castle Festival in Romania takes place every year, but it became more inclusive this year. To make the hearing impaired feel the beat, Gallego took to the stage and interpreted the music for the differently abled community. The move was appreciated by the hearing impaired. I really like to go to festivals. I have been going to festivals for the last few years. The atmosphere is beautiful. I feel integrated and I feel very good communicating with people. I like to communicate by sign language, but I also talk to them and greet them. According to Romania's Labour and Social Justice Ministry, over 23,000 people with hearing disabilities live in Romania and many of them struggle in their day-to-day -day life. However, this doesn't stop them from living their dreams to the fullest. I very much like to dance. I go to dance classes when I have time. Sometimes I go, some other times I take a break. I like to dance salsa and bhakta. It is hard because I have to follow the steps, I have to follow the rhythm, but I trust my dance partners and then I know when I'm being led, I can do it. People with hearing disabilities say more events should be organized to integrate them into the community. Now, a restaurant in Cape Town is offering diners something different and special in their menu, the bugs. Insect Experience is the first such restaurant in South Africa. The restaurant aims to serve the best insect dishes in town. The insect ingredients are locally sourced, with some bringing a nutty flavour profile. Mopani worm polenta and black soldier fly larvae croquettes are among the novel dishes they offer. We try to make it as visual pleasing for everybody um, to just introduce it. And basically it helps with your with your mental block. Once you had it, it's like oh, it's okay, like I can have the I can ha have the actual insect now and it's it's easier to overcome and do it in this way. Um, obviously it's got massive um, health benefits um, as a sustainable source of protein. The eatery hopes to eventually grow its menu. It's more like an overall experience, so getting through the idea of eating it for the first time was a bit tricky, but now that I've got through that, it's kind of just an everyday thing for me. The restaurant believes it offers a healthy, protein-rich meal. The larvae on top is that customers find these bug dishes delicious. And President Donald Trump says the U.S. will hit France with reciprocal taxes after Paris announced 3% levy on digital services. Trump says it should be the U.S. which can tax its companies. White House says France's unilateral tax appears to target innovative U.S. technology firms. It says Washington will not tolerate discrimination against U.S.-based firms. The U.S. economy has slowed significantly in the second quarter, falling under President Donald Trump's growth target of 3%. The economy grew at an annual rate of just over 2% in the second quarter, as opposed to slightly over 3% in the first quarter. Growth was still better than forecast, despite an increasingly varied industrial sector and warning exports. It was supported by a four-point surge in consumer spending, compared to an almost 1% rise in the first quarter. The highest spending helped offset a 5.2% dip in U.S. exports. 
It's also pushed up inflation by nearly 2%, just below the Federal Reserve target. Now let's have a look at the weather update across the globe. Well, here is with the weather update. We come to the end of this bulletin. For more news and analysis, you can always keep watching Indus News.